The U.S. Empire will be defeated by the U.S. Empire. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. Empire Managers. Putin invaded Ukraine. Public. Oh no! What should we do about it? Empire Managers. Greatly increase military spending, work to weaken Russia, and censor dissenting opinions. Public. Wait, aren't those things you've always wanted to do anyway? Empire Managers. Shh! Russian propaganda poses a much smaller threat to the Western world than the various government agendas that are being rolled out under the justification of fighting Russian propaganda. Fuel prices are soaring, in part because of an economic war the U.S. Empire willfully initiated in response to a proxy war the U.S. Empire deliberately provoked, and Westerners are being trained to look at their shrinking bank accounts and yell, Damn you, Putin! Only by massive amounts of propaganda would people consent to the unprecedented acts of economic warfare which directly hurt them and benefit them in no way, shape, or form. As the world slides closer to nuclear war, it would be cool if Americans could take a break from a debate about gun laws that will with absolute certainty lead nowhere and seriously discuss whether they want their government waging a rapidly escalating proxy war against Russia. The spectrum of acceptable debate on U.S. foreign policy ranges from A, war hawks who insist the U.S. has never done anything wrong, to B, progressives who say the U.S. is basically a good-faith actor who just makes well-intentioned oopsie-poopsie mistakes, but should still definitely keep arming Ukraine. Position B is the furthest you're allowed to go away from the U.S. never does anything wrong in mainstream discourse. It includes Bernie Sanders' foreign policy advisor, who smears and dismisses leftists who say the U.S. is acting in a malignant way in Ukraine. No voice at all is ever given to the, in my opinion, correct position that the U.S. is a tyrannical regime whose immense body count is explained not by accidents, but by the desire to dominate the world at any cost. The elimination of this position from the debate is by design. Sure, noble wars can be fought in theory and have been fought in practice. It's just that you've got swamp water for brains if you believe that's what the U.S. is doing. Never attribute to conspiracy what can be adequately explained by the inevitable corruption and tyranny of status quo capitalism. Whatever ends up collapsing the U.S. empire is far less likely to come from Russia or China than from the U.S. empire itself. A big part of the Western nervousness about China revolves around the fact that we're about to be surpassed by an ancient civilization of non-white people who are indigenous to their land and have never truly been conquered and colonized by Europeans. If you don't respect the way China has been able to pull so many of its people out of extreme poverty and don't get why such actions would cause such unified support for their government... It's simply because you lack an adequate understanding of the anguish of extreme poverty. I've met some cute kids in my time, but nobody's as adorable as Westerners who talk about Chinese people being propagandized. The Chinese government exerts a lot of power over its population, but it also takes responsibility for the way it uses that power. The USA's rulers exert a comparable amount of power over its population, but they never take any responsibility for what they do with it. Can't believe Mohammed bin Salman is sullying Saudi Arabia's name by meeting with the President of the United States. Putin should try staging a few mass beheadings and dismembering a Washington Post reporter with a bone saw to get on America's good side. Many empire apologists aren't actually defending the empire. They're just defending against the suggestion that everything they believe about their nation, their media, their government, and their world is a lie. The most impressive feat of engineering this century has been of the social variety, funneling mainstream political attention into agendas which don't inconvenience the powerful in the information age, where the ravages of capitalism and imperialism are right there to be seen in plain sight. 
the social engineering necessary to keep politically inclined people fixated on agendas that either won't lead anywhere or which trouble the powerful in no way, even as we entered an unprecedented age of information access, is one of the most awe-inspiring human achievements in history.